The time has come to present the results of a unique five-year project combining Formula One and cycling expertise. A project that brings together BMC and Red Bull Advanced Technology to develop the world's fastest TT and triathlon bike. Welcoming the all-new BMC Speed Machine. It's a timely launch for this bike ahead of the men's Ironman World Championships which will be taking place in Nice, where we have actually just arrived, and of course ahead of the women's Ironman World Championships which will be taking place in Kona next month. Now we have actually seen a prototype bike from BMC and Red Bull before, and that was last year at the Ironman World Championships in St. George, Utah, ridden by Patrick Nilsson. But clearly, that was just a step in the road in terms of its development. It has obviously developed significantly since then. In fact, more recently, we've actually seen some more of the BMC Pro Triathletes riding on another prototype of this more recent design. Now, I am told that they have designed this bike from the ground up. They've literally started from the drawing board on this one. And I've got to say, it does show. I mean, get a load of these wide stance forks. They've got this thin sort of spoiler design inside the fork. We've got this large hydration reservoir unit on the bike and this kind of teardrop design on the front axle at the base of the fork, almost like the hull of a ship. And let's not forget also, this is not just a triathlon bike. This can also be set up UCI legal for TTs too. There is a lot to unpack on this bike and stuff that I've never really seen before on a TT or triathlon bike. But before we dive into that, I thought, we should hear a little bit more about this partnership between Red Bull and BMC. Well, the, clearly the goal for Project Speed is to develop the fastest bike in the world. And that's the intention. Um, that's the journey we committed to. And finding a, partners like, a partner like Arbat for us, you know, brings um, additional competences. Really, this is, this is the dream, I would say, we all had as a, as a team between the Arbat engineering group and, and, and the BMC engineering group. And what is truly amazing is that it truly is the first Formula One bike. Well, as we've discussed, the pro athletes have been riding around on this bike already, although a slightly more discreet design. It's this black, minimal kind of looking design with the hashtag create speed slogan on there. This in particular is actually Chris Leafman's frame set, but it is literally just a frame set. You'll notice there's a lot missing from it. And that is because Stefano from BMC is currently working on his race bike on the new colorway, ready for race day. So he's stripped all the parts off, all his own personal customizations, his personal setup choices. And we thought we'd go and have a little look now ahead of the race. I've even managed to wangle one for myself too, or at least on loan for the day. So, I'm gonna go for a ride, see what this is all about. Let's go. Woohoo! That was awesome. Gold star to anyone that recognizes where I am. I am, of course, on the Ironman World Championship course here in Nice, which is also obviously the Ironman Nice course. First time on this course, actually. Incredible, just wow. And also wow to this bike, because considering I've literally just jumped on this bike for the first time today, very little setup time, the handling was amazing. I just felt super comfy, which I know will be music to the ears of the folk at BMC because apparently handling was at the forefront of their design process, obviously along with aerodynamics and integration. 
In fact, something that I thought was really interesting is that Red Bull have years of experience and testing and research in what they call driver feel, how a driver feels connected and at one with a car. And apparently they've brought this research and know-how into the design and development of this bike and what they call rider feel, how a rider feels connected to the bike. Their view is that if the rider has a better understanding of how the bike is going to react, how it's going to handle, they're going to have more confidence in the bike, more efficient use of their energy, it's not going to be lost elsewhere, and ultimately more speed. And obviously if they have more confidence in the bike, they may then end up opting for things like deeper wheels, which in turn is going to be more aerodynamic, and again, more speed. My name is Andy Damerum. I am the Commercial Development Officer for Red Bull Advanced Technologies. Well, BMC wanted Arbat to, to help them design the fastest bike, the fastest bike in the world ever. And what we did was we took Red Bull F1 DNA, um, which we would use to, uh, to make an F1 car go fast, and apply that to a bike design. The way Arbat contributed in this project really was by taking our um, our F1 methodologies, uh, and in this case it was aero and um, CFD, computational fluid dynamics. I'm really pleased, I think the whole team are really pleased to see the final product. We just want to see it perform now on track. So, what's special about this bike then? Well, there are some small details that probably won't excite you too much, but actually have a significant impact on the feel of the bike, like the radical head tube angle, the rake and the trail dimensions. But some more significant features on the bike that may excite you a bit more are the integrated hydration unit here on the down tube. In fact, it's quite low towards the bottom bracket, and that is partly for aerodynamics, filling that massive void, but also by being low towards the bottom bracket actually helps the stability of the bike. Interestingly though, they've opted for the straw actually to come outside the frame, neatly hidden behind the down tube. It then tucks into and cuts in through the head tube, pops out of the top, and then that straw is attached by magnet to the aero bars. So nice and easily accessed without having to come out of the aero bars. All of this can actually be removed. So this is a 1.2 litre reservoir that can be refilled on the go, but you can actually remove that and replace with a 400 mil tank that then would obviously be UCI compliant. Have also got a storage unit that can attach behind the seat tube here for triathletes out there. So you can store your spares in there, which has a neat little light on the back of it too. But particular attention has been paid to controlling airflow via tube shapes and the frame shape and design. And guys, this is the cool stuff, so listen up. So first off, we've got this airfoil shape on the forks and the seat stays here. But they've also got little details like this cutting area at the back of the rear triangle, this teardrop design at the bottom of the forks, almost like the hull of a ship. But we've also got these protruding sections from the front of the rear stays and the forks. I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost an offset between the profile of the two faces. And my understanding is that is to break this area of high pressure in terms of the airflow and then to control that airflow. And that is exactly where this spoiler or fin comes into play that's actually inside the fork underneath the head tube and that is to control the airflow into the down tube all of which apparently has been extensively tested with cfd testing wind tunnel testing and also in the real world more than they have ever done before and finally, they've managed to reduce the weight of this bike, or the frame set, by a whopping 500 grams when compared to their previous triathlon bike, which is pretty substantial and obviously ideal for a course like this one. They will have three models of this bike. There is the 01 Mod, which is their lower spec, the 01 Two, and then the 01 Limited, which will be their top spec bike. And so whilst the bike launches a day, it will be available for sale from the beginning of November. So. What do you guys think? Do you think bringing this expertise from a completely different sector into the world of cycling has brought a whole new way of thinking to cycling? Is it good? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments section down below. Personally, I think it's awesome.
I've thoroughly enjoyed riding this today, so it's a big thumbs up from me, and well, I'm gonna make the most of this. I'm gonna ride at home. See you guys soon.